Good morning. Thank you for joining us on this SAG After live stream on YouTube. To stay informed about all of our live stream and video events, we invite you to subscribe to this channel. You can go ahead and do that right now. Today, we present the President's Task Force on Education, Outreach, and Engagement live stream, Staying Present, Improv for Acting. We'll be pausing throughout as we'll have a pair of interpreters, Mara Bassani, Santa Maria, and Nicole Pansino here with us today to translate into American Sign Language. Mara and Nicole will be switching off periodically throughout today's session. The presentation will begin momentarily. If you have questions that you would like to direct to today's guests, please email pteoe at sagaftra.org. Again, that's pteoe at sagaftra.org. As a reminder, today's program is being recorded and you can watch the replay right here on SAG AFTRA's YouTube channel, along with more great content. So now please give a warm welcome to today's host, SAG AFTRA President, Gabrielle Carteris. Thank you, Shira. Thank you, thank you. Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well. We have to get today a fantastic, fun, and very important program for you. It's, as Shira said, staying present, uh, staying present improv for acting. Improv to me is one of the most essential um, forms of training you can do as, a, as an actor. It's very freeing. Um, we have, I don't even know if some of you have ever wanted to break into improv before. Here is your chance to learn about individual, the individual skills for performers across any genre. And also it's, helpful, it's a helpful skill to show you how active listening can actually help you in an audition and in a role. So we have members of the iconic improv and sketch comedy troupe Upright Citizens Brigade or UCB to talk to you through some comedy basics with a few interactive demonstrations. Improv is short for improvisational theater, which essentially means that performers are working off the cuff or actually working in the moment. No script, no clue as to what their fellow performer is going to toss their way, just openness and being ready to receive. UCB's uh, world-class instructors use improv and storytelling as a lens through which to train a wide range of professional skills, focusing on creative collaboration, better communication, active listening, brainstorming, uh, presentational skills, and so, so much more. So while generally improving, uh, improving participants' abilities to think on their feet, that's really the, uh, the kind of work that we're doing today. So if you're watching online and have questions about today's discussion, please email pteoe at sagaftra.org. Again, that is pteoe at sagaftra.org. So before we kick off today's panel discussion, I want to introduce SAG AFTRA's Executive Vice President, Rebecca Damon. Hello, Rebecca. Thank you for Hello, being here. Hello, Gabrielle. This is uh, super exciting. People were looking yeah. forward to this one. Fun. Yeah. Me too. I'm very excited. So we have with us today UCB's actor and instructor, Sarah Claspill and Johnny Meeks who's an actor and director of, uh, of education for UCB. So hello. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Johnny. How are you? Hello. Thank you for being here, you guys. And I'm going to go and pass it off to you and have a great time. <laughs> great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks to sag -Aftra and Gabrielle and Rebecca and Shira. We really appreciate the opportunity to show you all uh, just a little taste of what we do at UCB. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to Sarah in just a moment, but I'll, I'll talk about a little bit about what we do and how we started and how we got here. And uh, also today's topic, which is staying present, how you can use your improv training for your acting. Uh, just to give you a brief history of, of the Upright Citizens Brigade, our founders are uh, Amy Poehler, Matt Walsh, Matt Besser, and Ian Roberts. They had a uh, improv team in Chicago. They studied under the, the improv master Del Close and then moved to New York uh, and brought uh, that, style, that Chicago style of long form improv, which I'll get to in just a minute what that is, to New York, which was uh, not uh, big on the scene there. They became very popular with their show in the mid 90s, and they just got a lot of people said, hey, we want to learn how to do what you do. So they started teaching and established our school uh, at the end of the 90s in New York, started our theater there, and then that took it to Los Angeles in 2005. And that's when I hooked up with the theater, I've been teaching and performing there since 2005. Um, and uh, really, the, the approach that our founders took to teaching improv and, and their specific take on it really just got super popular and we've had uh, a lot of success on both coasts teaching improv to, to anyone really, 
Um, but of course, we do get a lot of actors uh, who come uh, to study with us. We teach uh, long form improv, obviously, uh, but we also teach sketch writing, character work. We do musical improv. Uh, we now online teach pilot writing. Uh, so there's a lot going on at our school beyond improv, but uh, certainly the way we teach improv is, is something that's been really popular. Uh, just to give you a, a, a sense of what's the, what is long form improv, when I say long form improv, what's, what's, the diff, what's the difference between that and short form improv, which I think most people are more familiar with. Short form is something like, uh, whose line is it anyway? Where there's a host and they're giving you uh, a game to play, almost like a parlor game, and they outline the rules of the game before you begin, and once you complete the game, the game's over. Something like a game like Party Quirks, where one improviser leaves the room and the host assigns a quirk to the other improvisers, uh, such as you're secretly an octopus, uh, you believe the earth is flat, these kinds of things. The other improviser comes back into the, to the scene, not knowing these quirks, and has to guess what the quirks are. And at the end of that, that, that game's over. Long form is quite different from that in that context. We're really teaching you how to improvise a comedic scene, how to uh, build together through active listening, as Gabrielle mentioned, and a yes anding to find a, to improvise a sketch. So it's not necessarily a, a quote unquote game, it is a sketch. So when you go see a show at one of our theaters, you're seeing a 30 minute, maybe an hour long, maybe an hour and a half long show, that's a series of improvised sketches. So there's a, that, the bar is a little bit higher with long form than it is with short form. There's um, a lot more technique to learn. It takes a lot longer to really get good at these uh, practices, but you can start benefiting from what we teach right away. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit, uh, not too much because we want to get to the action uh, about um, wh why improv for acting? What does it do for you? Well, I think Many of you have probably heard from your teachers, from your managers, from your agents, you should get something like UCB style training uh, to put that on your resume, to let people know you, you, you have some grounding in comedy because we we're auditioning for that constantly. I would say there's two things to take away from the training uh, at least, but the two I think big bullet points are, if you're auditioning uh, and you're asked to improvise, uh, that happens a lot in the commercial world, if you understand what's funny about the scene and they want you to do a button or maybe take the scene a little bit further through our training, you'll know what to do. You'll know exactly. Well, I understand the game of the scene, which is what we uh, call our training, learning the game, the internal game of the scene. What's fun about it? How can I heighten and explore this comedic idea? If you're asked to do that in an audition, you'll have that skill in your back pocket. Won't even, uh, you won't even blink. Uh, if you're asked to do that. Uh, it helps you stay on with the, the author or the director's in, in, intention with the comedy of the scenes. It helps you stay on track with that. And then the other thing I think that's even uh, maybe more important that Gabrielle already mentioned is the skill of active listening. You will get that in, in this training. You, you, your uh, lifeline to the scene is your scene partner. So uh, as actors, we know how important that is to put the scene on your scene partner and listen to them and build with them. So uh, this is a crucial skill for that. Um, I'm going to now uh, turn it over to Sarah and she's gonna uh, demonstrate some of these exercises. This is obviously just a, a taste of what we do. Sometimes I get emails from prospective students and they wanna know a little bit more about what they're getting into. Uh, there's a, could be some fear around that, which I understand if you don't have a script, if you don't have a safety net and you're asked to be funny, Oh my God, that's uh, that's can be terrifying. Um, let me, uh, as you'll see, just momentarily put all that aside and say, "Hey, we're never going to ask you to be funny. We're only going to ask you to listen and to yes and what your scene partner does." Uh, so, in one on one, you'll find that it's an extremely uh, improv one on one. Our first class, extremely supportive environment. It's for anybody at any skill level. Um, and then as we go, the work gets even more interesting and more uh, challenging as you, as you build towards it. I think that's all I want to say. Of course, we'll I'd be happy to answer questions when we get to that point. Sarah, anything to add to what I just rambled on about? Um, I thought that was Johnny. Great job. Oh, uh, 
Thank uh, you. Support. Support. Yeah, support. Listen, everybody, we're all in our homes. Give it up for Johnny in your home. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but yeah, I, I uh, agree with what Johnny said. It's improv is such an important, uh, helpful uh, tool for acting. The exercises we're doing today, um, there's a bunch of different exercises, but they all really focus on commitment to our characters, on finding the motivation, what, what motivates our characters to make our choices. Once we find that, it, um, it makes it a lot easier to make our next choices and making our characters personal. A lot of comedy is um, uh, we end up playing characters and people and <laughs> dragons and things like that that are not like ourselves, but it is it makes it a lot easier to play when we are making them, uh, uh, coming at them from our own perspective. You don't have to try to be somebody else, even though you're playing a dragon going through a divorce. Uh, two things I've never ha had to go through, <laughs> but I, I know what it's like to, you know, I, I, if I can add my emotions to that character, um, uh, we're still making it personal. It becomes a lot more funny and interesting. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Johnny, should we get into it? Please. I can't wait. All right. Oh, we um, should say that these are actual UCB students that graciously oh, yes. volunteered their time to come demo what this this is. Uh, yes. I think you're going to love these guys. Let's bring them in. Yeah, let's bring in Brent, uh, Brent Mukai, Lisa Masiel, Juliet Lynn, and Al Donahoe. Hello, friends. Thanks for doing this. Um, one of my favorite parts about doing uh, improv online too is that um, you're all four in four extremely different places. Um, Lisa's in New York, Juliet's in uh, Los Angeles, Brent is in uh, Barstow, California, <laughs> tuning in live, and Al is in um, Liverpool. So um, that's, that's the magic of uh, online improv, everybody. Um, anyway, Brent, Lisa, Al, and Juliet, hello. Good to see you guys. Thanks for doing this. Hello. What's up? Awesome. Thank you for having us. <laughs> of course. Um, all right, we're gonna do, uh, we're just gonna do some exercises. Uh, our first one, this, uh, first I do, <laughs> I should have done this before you came on, but you guys can nod along with me and support me. Um, I kind of just wanna describe what yes and is. Um, <laughs> thanks for the nods. Um, we talk a lot about yes and, and I feel like people who don't do improv are like, yeah, I've heard of yes and, you just say yes to everything and there we go. And that kind of is true, but what, uh, what yes and mean, means is you're saying yes to the world that has been set up that we've established and you're adding to it. Um, so it's not just yes, but it's adding something fun that fits within that world. Um, sometimes saying yes and means saying no in character. Um, if Al is playing a vegan and uh, Lisa offers him a hot dog, it would be insane for him to say yes because if you've met a vegan, they don't eat hot dogs, you guys. <laughs> they eat <laughs> tofu dogs and they're pretty good, but it's um, not a thing that they would say yes to. So that's what yes and is. Anyway, speaking of yes and, we're going to do guest panel. Guest panel goes like this. Um, all four of you, uh, you know each other. Um, uh, we're going to pretend that this is, uh, <laughs> how fun, that this is a panel uh, where you are all joining us. I will say thank you so much for joining us, who are the four of you to each other? Um, one of you will then, um, sorry, my cat is yelling. Uh, you guys, what are you gonna do? Um, uh, one of you will say, hi, yeah, we are, and then label what it is that you are. It can be anything in the world. We are members of a boy band from the 90s, or we all wrote a cookbook together or something different. Please be something different. You can't use those two, those are mine. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, um, but um, as soon as one person says, yes, we are members of a 90s boy band, the rest of you, I want to yes and. Yes, we are members of a 90s boy band. And uh, the name of that boy band was uh, The Cuties. That's right, we were The Cuties. And our number one song was um, Cute Boys. <laughs> I don't know, that would be my boy band. Uh, <laughs> Um, but we're saying yes, and we're adding to it. Uh, with our and, uh, we can add um, our who, who are we, where are we, what are we doing, what do we care about, um, our who, what, where is what we call that. Um, with this, what do I want to say? I wrote it all down. Uh, we will be practicing uh, balance. 
So make sure that you're not the person speaking the whole time, but you're also not the person who uh, isn't contributing. We want to hear your voice. Um, and finally, we're going to play against type. So if I label us as a 90s boy band and you're like, I'm not a, a boy and I don't sing, that's okay. Because we can all play those characters as long as we're playing them in a respectful way. Make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Well, thank you for so much for joining us. Um, glad to have you here. What, who are the four of you to each other? We are part of the teachers union. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we, uh, we get together on a regular basis just to talk about general, general teachery things really get down into it. Don't we guys? Yes, yeah. we also focus on elementary school students as well. We we care about the kids, so that's what we do. We do, but also, you know, we're not like your grandpa's teacher union. We're like fun. We party. We do we do cool stuff. You know, keep it kids, light. Kids want to be us when they grow up. They want to. They want to be more like the union. A lot of kids come to us, they go, hey, the, the, the union's so cool. I wish we could be you. Definitely. We have TikTok videos every Friday, pizza parties every Saturday, and Taco Tuesday, of course. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And we're doing an Instagram live stream. So come join us. All the kids love watching. Yeah, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be dressing up like like different party animals and uh, like literal animals. And we're just going to be drinking a bunch of fruit punch, eating ice cream. We might scoop some ice cream into the fruit punch if we feel a little crazy. <laughs> you know and sometimes we are, especially Brent. Um, our hashtag oh. and what we always go with is the happy pineapples. That You can find us everywhere with that. I think we're supposed to be planning the safety protocol for the little school dance. But I think it's just like, you know, just have a good time. Make sure the kids are enjoying it. That's really, that's it. Yeah. And, and plus we have a bunch of like YouTube videos to watch of people just doing fails and things. Cause we're cool. You know, that's the kind of thing we enjoy. Yeah. We can't, we can't stress that enough. We're cool teachers, you right. know, like you, you remember the show, uh, don't, don't the lava show. Don't touch the lava. We all oh. went there and we did that. We were like, we're the cool teachers. That's what that was. We were team pineapple. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I, um, I do have to say uh, you are well known as a very cool teachers union. Um, a lot of parents have been complaining, perhaps, that you um, are not very focused on education. Um, what sort of education uh, are you focused on um, in response to that? Yeah, I think that the most important experience is really just um, life. So that's really what we focus on. There's like a curriculum and everything like history, math, but it's just like human interaction. That's the most important, like socialization. That's what we're teaching the kids. My, my wife left me last week. Okay. Now, so sorry. Hey, sorry, yeah. thankfully, because we're cool and we know how to be cool. I'm going to move on from that. I'm going to be fine. We're, we're all going to be fine because we're cool. So I'm not, yeah, that's they're the kind of like type of lessons that we're teaching. Yeah, we're based in real, you know, like we're based in like cool type of math and history. Like, you know what I mean? Like last week, Al had one wife and now we subtract one and that's zero. And now the kids know that. Math. See what I'm saying? Like we get, we're figuring it out. We're just, we're just always thinking, noodling. And next week with his trial, what we're going to do is we're going to do the math, of course. Um, how do you divide things? So we're going to get his actual items and we're going to separate them into two piles for him and his wife. Yeah, we just figured there's not enough like, like you you exit school and there's not enough like real world experience. So that's what we wanted to bring. And I think, you know, the parents, they, when their kids turn older, they'll be like, those teachers, they knew what they were teaching. They might not get it now, but they will. So don't it's worry. It's like law, life, math, science, mm -hmm. organizational skills. I yeah. mean, I don't, I don't even use science, so it's like you know, the not last week. We we last week we took the kids to the water park and we were just like, how's that work? We were asking all the employees. They're like, there's water that comes through, and that's science. H two O's. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I, I think there's just a lot of uh, a lot of going to water parks, a lot of going to um, Professor Donahoe's um, 
divorce proceedings. Mm. Um, and not Thank you all for coming, by the way. I really appreciate the support, guys. We're here right. for you, man. We're here. There's, there's just not a lot Love of you. like kids in class. Um, learning stuff which you know I, I love getting kids excited about learning I, I think that's very very helpful um are you uh for the upcoming school year is there um anything you have planned um uh to um maybe a, a focus or something like that a um something that kids might be doing in the classroom yeah we are planning that trip to vegas <gasps> Vegas. Yes, and that is happening Vegas. in the classroom. We're having them plan a trip, mm -hmm. you know, and using their laptops and stuff. And it's like how to be organized, how to think about timing, how to manage things. Yeah. Yeah, Julia is definitely, she has a group of students and they're doing live Twitch streams. And I'm in so order proud to of them. Money oh, for I'm Vegas sure. because, you know, they care about us as much as we care about them. We took a kid to Vegas uh, two years ago, and he just he one, just kid. one, just one kid. We just took yeah, one kid to we Vegas. don't talk about the other. There was no other kid. I, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, Me neither. Yeah. <laughs> I'm concerned. Um, no, don't be. No. He just missed what? Me. Did you? He lost did... everything in Vegas. Really, he learned. He learned the truest lesson of life which is gambling is bad, also with a with a limited, uncool knowledge of math. <laughs> Am I right, guys? <laughs> they also <laughs> learned it's illegal if you're under 18. But. Yeah. Like, I yeah. taught him card counting skills, and he didn't hack it. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Life All right, give it up for our teachers. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Great. Uh, that was guest panel. That's one version of a, a super yes. And I, <laughs> this is the magic of improv to me is that um, we would not have gotten there alone, but it turns out we're a teacher's union who is we're taking one kid to Vegas and we're going through <laughs> Al's divorce proceedings. Um, that's, that's the magic of improv, everybody. Um, <laughs> we're going to do another exercise. This is, um, this is just a little warm up sort of thing. I'm uh, uh, viewers, you can't see it, but I'm pasting our names into the chat. So just so that we know in order, it's Brent, Lisa, Al, and Juliet um, is the order that this is going to be. And the uh, what we're doing, this is called Ted the Loquacious Gardener. Um, Brent is, uh, oops, that's the wrong thing. Brent is going to give us a name. Lisa will give us an adjective. Al will give us uh, an occupation. Um, and Juliet, I just want you to say a few lines as that character um, using those, those things that we've given you. Um, these are basically little, uh, we talk about the game of the scene. These, these are kind of little mini character game uh, building things. We're figuring out what, uh, who your character is, your, your occupation, and what, uh, what you're all about, <laughs> what your deal is. So uh, does that sound good? Any questions, you guys? Okay. Nope. Brent, give us a name. Jasmine. Jasmine. Lisa, an adjective. Hyper. A hyper and L, a occupation. Astronaut. All right, let's see it, Julia. Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm so excited to be here today. I do not even drink any coffee, but I'm going in the rocket ship today. So I, I just had to, I just had to, I just, I just, I just had to, I just had to load up on coffee. And um, yeah, so um, yeah, we've been doing a lot of work and I've been, you know, really anticipating the anti-gravity. So I think it'll be really exciting, except I don't know, it's going to like slow me down, but I feel like I, I shouldn't really slow down because I'm like really hyper on coffee. Great. <laughs> I love it. Um, all right, Lisa, give us a name. Um, Tiffany. Tiffany, Al, uh, an adjective? Um, Devious. The devious and Juliet and occupation. Firefighter. All right, let's see it, Brent. Mm, can't wait to put out fires today. <laughs> uh, so many fires. I'm going to definitely do something about them because I'm a hero. People love when you see a fire, somebody goes in, they say, hey, let me put that out. <laughs> But sometimes there aren't enough fires, so, you know, <laughs> you just got to help the fires along sometimes. You got to, right. so you can be there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I think Tiffany needs to stop smoking cigarettes. Uh. <laughs> I think that's the part of the film Backdraft. Yeah. See, you develop a character, and now you can write a whole movie based around that character. <laughs> um, Al, give us a name. Um, Oscar. Oscar. Uh, Julia, an adjective. The picky. The picky and Brent, an occupation. A trailer park concierge. All right. Um, Oscar, the uh, picky trailer park concierge. Let's see it, Lisa. Okay, so I'm here at this trailer park. Like, like the real estate person is really nice, but like, I have to weigh my options, you know? Like, I could go with C with the shedding and the mold, or I could go with the wheels and B because, you know, you got to be active. You got to go. You got to go from A to B, to C to D, or, oh, oh, I don't know. I don't like that shade of yellow with C. Um, okay. I, I, okay. So I could do, I can do mold. I could do yellow or I could do wheels. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and finally, uh, Juliet, give us a name. Geraldo. Geraldo. Brent, an adjective. Sticky. <laughs> Sticky. And Lisa, an occupation. Zookeeper. <laughs> Zookeeper. Let's see what you do with it, Al. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I have... <sighs> I have I have the giraffe stuck to my arm again. Honest, I'm so everybody. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I eat a lot of donut. Look, I eat donuts. I eat jelly donuts, and they get on my hands. I am yes. Well, th thank God it's not the lion. Remember last time? That was a nightmare. It ruined everybody's day and the wedding that we had at the zoo, which doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> great give it up for al <laughs> wedding at a zoo sounds great um i'll do it um all right we're gonna do another exercise um this is a uh this is a character motivation sort of exercise um and uh, i uh, you've all been in my classes that's why i chose you to be here but you know that this is something i'm all about i'm all about like hey let's figure out what is, um, this character has made a choice. Let's figure out who the person is that made that choice so that we can make more choices. Know that our, um, our character is not based off of, just like the rest of us, we're not based off of one choice. Um, our whole life isn't that one choice, but it is who's the person that decided to do that and then let's uh, figure out our next moves based on who that person is. That, uh, <laughs> that probably sounded too complicated, but it will make sense with this uh, description I'm gonna give you now. Um, we are doing a premise lawyer. Premise lawyer goes like this. Um, we will give one person a premise, something they, um, an unusual thing that they do or um, an unusual thing that they believe about the, how the world should work. Like, um, hey, Lisa, you believe that um, no one should ever wear shoes or you believe that um, uh, kids shouldn't have to go to school, um, whatever the unusual thing is. And then uh, Lisa will defend that, will justify why she believes that. Yeah, I think that um, no one should ever wear shoes because, and let's get to a justification that shows us who this person is. We wanna get deeper than just, I don't think people should wear shoes because shoes are bad. <laughs> That's okay, maybe shoes are bad, but why are shoes bad? Who's the person that decided you shouldn't wear shoes? Um, a better justification would be, yeah, I think people shouldn't wear shoes because shoes separate you from nature and we should be in touch with nature um, as much as possible. Um, that tells us a lot more about this person than just someone who hates shoes. Um, so figure out who this person is. And then the rest of us will say, if this is true, what else must be true about this person? Where do they live? Where do they work? What do they do for fun based off of uh, what we know? So yeah, shoe, a person who doesn't think we should wear shoes because um, we should be in touch with nat nature. Maybe they live, um, maybe they live in a hut. <laughs> um, maybe they, um, maybe they're constantly wearing flowers in their hair. Uh, maybe they work 
at um, at the zoo and they're trying to free the animals. I don't know. Um, uh, maybe they work at the wedding at the zoo. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't need to be within the same world. Uh, but does that make sense to you four? Any questions? All right. Um, I said Lisa's name, so Lisa's up first. Let's give Lisa a premise, something unusual she does or believes. Lisa thinks shoes um, are actually like a delicacy, like an edible, edible delicacy. <laughs> Great. You believe that shoes are an edible delicacy. And uh, tell us why. Yeah, of course. Like, I honestly think that it's so weird that no one else does. Like, when you go to around the world, like, as a traveler, everyone does things that one person doesn't believe is right. Like some people eat cockroaches, some people have apples, some people have like oat milk, like seriously. So you know what? Edible shoes is, it's where it's at. It's very, it's full of fiber and it's full of a lot of things that's good for you. Also, it cleans you on the inside. And that's <laughs> what you need. You need to be pure and you need to be just like one with the earth. And you have to understand that sometimes people might have a difference of opinions. And I, I, I don't have anything to say more than that because. <laughs> Great. So Lisa's character is all about, you know, following the trend, but doing it because it's like cleansing for yourself. Um, so if this is true, what else must be true about this character? She also um, splits open cactuses to drink their water. Right. Yeah, I love it. What else? And you can answer as well, Lisa. I, I, th I think she. I think she eats a lot of other crazy things. Uh, she's very open-minded, so she'll try. She'll try any any kind of food that's put in front of her. She's just going to be like, "Yep, yeah, I'll go for this." Leather leather sofas, right, right, right the way through. <laughs> as long as it it's healthy, as long yeah. as there's a reason for it to be healthy. Like if I'm told that this thing is healthy, I'm going to do it. Yeah, leather and wood. That sofa. That's healthy. <laughs> uh, anything else? feel like she rides her main transportation is a unicycle with training wheels on it. <laughs> and why is that? That's day of the earth. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and good for the spine. Good for the good for your pocket. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. No, uh, no carbon footprint on a unicycle with training wheels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's give it up for Lisa. Nice job. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Al. You're up. Uh, let's give Al a premise. What's something unusual Al does or believes? Al believes that parking signs are just a suggestion. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can I can park more or less where, wherever I want. In fact, anyone anyone can. Um, <laughs> they they put them down. They, they obviously, they're like it's like it's like. Um, it's like a general guidance. It's like in the UK where they give you general guidance on your masks. Like it's just a general guidance thing. They're just kind of loosey goosey with it. They don't really, they don't really care about those things. And 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 you know what? I, I sort of see that everywhere I go. Like, you know, it's like, hey, don't don't have a drink and get in the car. Well, occasionally. That's like a general guidance kind of thing. Pay your TV license if you want to. <laughs> You know, it's like you don't have to do like these sort of like sort of like um they're just kind of like hints and gestures that you can do if you want to do that's that's me great um i love it if this is true what else must be true about this character al does not pay rent utility <laughs> bills cable anything <laughs> yeah it's just a suggestion I He's make donations been... when I have the money, when I decide to go to work. <laughs> He's been evicted seven times, but um, sure. yeah. <laughs> I feel like Al would go to the zoo and actually feed the animals. <laughs> he yeah. walks into he walks into stores without shirt and shoes, even though it says they're supposed to wear shirt and shoes. 
<laughs> Al has a dog and you know those signs that say don't poop on the grass or don't do anything curve your animal he just let them do it whatever Al watched the M. Night Shyamalan movie signs and completely missed the point <laughs> 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 uh, it's a deep cut for those of us who remember uh, the plot of signs. <laughs> the hidden gem signs. <laughs> we all know every plot point of signs, of course. Uh, <laughs> give it up for Al. <laughs> all right, Juliet is up. Let's give uh, Juliet a premise. What's something unusual she does or believes? She thinks the more hair, the better. <laughs> so here's the thing. I mean, some people like Brent are somewhat bald, but you know, <laughs> I'm just going to say that, the more, you know, if you just put on a wig that I just think that people would take you more seriously because the longer your hair is, it means the longer you've been alive and the healthier your hair is. So basically the more hair that you have, the more people will respect you and the more people will think that your words have weight. Great. Excellent. Uh, if this is true, what else must be true about this character? She's against shaving and waxing of all types. Oh yeah. She respects the hell out of Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Teen Wolf has earned her respect with all that hair. What else? She has zero respect for Sarah Elton John. Anybody in the toupee, she is just 100% <laughs> against. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, she takes her longevity and health advice from Slash, the, the musician <laughs> Slash. <laughs> mm -hmm. She is all for PETA. Like, nothing you have to make sure that the hair and the fur it's all pristine you can't do anything to damage it <laughs> she like this refuse, oh, sorry oh, oh no go ahead she would refuse surgery emergency surgery from a doctor without a decent head of hair yeah <laughs> <laughs> i would definitely join a cult because the guy had long hair sure <laughs> Definitely, what he you would definitely sense. join a cult. You would 100% join a cult. <laughs> He's got the hair. Her favorite musical is Hairspray. <laughs> I mean, whose is it? It's great. Um, uh, I feel like this person also, like every vacation, you just go to visit like the Redwoods or just the, those big trees that have like, you know, hundreds of rings for their years. Um, give it up for Juliet. And Brent, you're up. Uh, let's give Brent uh, a premise, something unusual he believes or does. Brent believes that the best animal to have is a koala. Yeah, uh, I, I, took a, I took a trip to Australia in my college years. And um, as you can tell, I picked up a little bit of the accent, crikey. <laughs> and I thought, these people, they know stuff that we don't, you know, living in any other country. I've been around the world and Australia is obviously the greatest. They got all the animals, all the forests, I think. And um, <laughs> I've, I've sort of become an Australiophile. I'm, I'm, I'm everything Australia without being from Australia, mates. <laughs> Great. If this is true, what else must be true about this character? Favorite movie stars, Hugh Jackman, Marvel Garavi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but only when he speaks Ever. with his native accent. Okay. Get this Wolverine <laughs> nonsense out of here. <laughs> uh, Brent ordered a specialist toilet in his bathroom so the water spins the other way. <laughs> Very expensive not cheap i feel like this character wears um wears like a crocodile dundee hat everywhere well what other hat is there <laughs> Especially i mean honestly i'm just saying a true fact about brent uh, yeah. this is something you do and you look good 
<laughs> yeah, especially when you're mostly bald like me. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get people to respect you. <laughs> right, exactly. What else? Last year, last year, Brent was in London and he picked up a London accent and said he was going to eat English breakfast every morning. <laughs> Chip, chip, cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> and last, the, ma- the month before that, like he went to China and he, all he wanted to do was have Chinese food. He just wanted to speak the language and be with the culture and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Very fascinating with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to space and now I made up my own language. <laughs> <laughs> I call it Gleep Glop. <laughs> I, was, I was Jeff Bezos' plus one. So, <laughs> I'm all of, I'm kind of all about space too. <laughs> Give it up for Brent. Nice job, everybody. Um, yeah, I love that exercise because it is a, um, I mean, as with all of these exercises, uh, there's a lot of great reasons for actors to do improv. One of them is it's fun. <laughs> um, I, um, that's, one of my main reasons, even though there's a bunch of other great reasons, but it also, I like this exercise because very often our characters are doing uh, in improv or in acting, we do, you know, we act an unusual way. We act in a very specific way. And I think part of that character development is figuring out who's the person that decided to do this crazy thing. Um, I, um, I killed my neighbor's cat does that make me like the only reason I did this is because um, I hate cats and I want to murder cats. No, definitely not. I obviously love cats, Um, but let's figure out the reason why maybe I did this because, Oh, I'm trying to get back at my neighbor. And um, so now all of my next moves are not just cat murder. What a very dark example. I'm so sorry. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) My cat's over here looking at me like, how dare you say that? Um, (laughs) But uh, we want to find out the person, what their motivation is. That's a th- <laughs> also a thing that we, uh, we joke a lot about as actors. What's my motivation? But it's incredibly important. And uh, exercises like this are very helpful for that. Um, all right. I think we'll do one more thing. This is, um, uh, this is about commitment. Um, this one is called Expert Circle. Um, we are all experts on everything in the world, um, which is very cool for us. Um, And uh, we're each going to get a question. One of us will answer this question. um, uh, And I want you to answer at the top of your intelligence. That means to the very best of your ability, um, if you get asked the question, hey, how does a carburetor work? I want you to do your very best to answer whatever you think that means. Um, Me, Sarah Claspell, isn't quite sure what a carburetor is. But um, me, Sarah Claspell, the improviser who is an expert on everything in the world might answer, oh, a carburetor, yes. Um, it works in your engine uh, with, uh, the, with the pistons of your engine. Um, your carburetor makes your pistons move and uh, the oil flows through those so that your engine will keep running. Is that what a carburetor is? I don't know. But did it sound, you know, pr- pretty real? I think so. I think <laughs> I sounded committed. So that's uh, what we're going to do. We're experts. We're taking uh, expert questions. Um, Al, you're up. Let's ask Al a question that he uh, he definitely knows the answer to. Tell us about the the layers of the of the Earth's crust. <laughs> Thank you for asking me, Brent. And this is something I, I know a lot about. Um, there are there are several layers. Uh, there is a, I believe, the 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 therma crust, which is the the crust I think protects us from the heat in the center. Uh, protects from the heat in the center of the earth. And there is a there is a softer kind of middle piece that is called kind of moving molten rock, um, which can affect uh, the tectonic plates which are just, just above that. How can I forget the tectonic plates, the most important of the plates? Um, if they shift, for those of you in California, you will know things can get a bit, things can get a bit dicey. Uh, thankfully, they're, they're, very, they're normally quite stable. And in the center of the earth, just underneath the crust, there's a lot of hot molten lava. And actually, we don't know that much about the center of the earth, but we can hazard a guess that it is, obviously it's very hot and it is constantly constantly burning a little bit similar to the sun true great 
Um, <laughs> that's 100% true. Um, uh, I think we just have time for one more. Let's get Juliet. Um, let's ask Juliet a question. What's, um, Juliet's an expert, as we know. Um, what's a question we have for her? Um, Juliet, um, why does the sun, why, why do we need the sun? Well, the reason we need the sun is this process called photosynthesis. Life begins with this, as I'm sure you've all heard. And um, we need the sun because it shines its little rays onto the plants. And then the plants are like, thank you for the sunshine. And then they create nutrients. And then humans eat those plants and cows and other animals also eat those. And it's just the natural circle of life that we all need to exist. Right. And I think that's actually true. Uh, <laughs> <but everybody. laughs> Thank goodness I know about the sun. Oh, thank God. Um, and uh, let's give it up for our, um, our uh, guest improvisers, Brent, Lisa, Al, and Juliet. Thank you guys so much for joining us. You guys us. are so great. I said you didn't have to be funny, but they were. <laughs> they were beyond I funny. And I have to say, I appreciated your commitment because that's really, so as I'm watching and watching you guys play and live in the world of yes, I'm also seeing just how uh, focused you are in that freedom that you have. So I, I just, I think it's really interesting. It was great to watch you. And we have a lot of questions that came in. So I'm gonna try, right. I, I wanna make sure to uh, go through some of those questions for people who are interested in improv and saw what you just did. So here is, I'm the artistic director of an improv group in uh, Augusta. We think great. the most, say again? I was just saying great. I love oh, to hear great. this. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we think the most important things to emphasize are education, fun, safe environment for expression, accountability, and a strong work ethic. What is the most important part of maintaining a group like UCB? And what do you think has contributed to its longevity? That's a Amazing question. <laughs> uh, I, for, for one thing, to, just to its longevity, I, I really think it has a lot to do with the curriculum that we've developed over the years that uh, everyone um, responds really well to. The progression that we offer at our school is very specific and uh, really well um, thought through. And, and that's not complimenting me. This came from before my time. Um, so uh, I think that's one thing. And, and then a, a second thing is the community we build. And I think the, the person who asked that question was already kind of alluding to that about creating a safe uh, environment, a tolerant environment, a supportive environment, um, ha having a community uh, in, a, in a comedy world and an improv world is such a huge thing. I, I lived in Los Angeles for a, a few years before UCB opened up. Um, and once it once it did, and once I got involved in that community, I, that's when I really sort of fell in love with this area and this industry because of the support uh, we got from uh, we get from our, my, my teammates that I perform with every week, my colleagues like Sarah. Um, there, there's a that that idea of yes and that we just explored so well in those exercises extends not just to the comedy but to the backstage stuff, to the uh, the community stuff, the the reaching out and supporting each other. I always say as an actor, the, the most interesting and cool stuff that I've booked almost 100% has come from my relationships through, through UCB. So, and that's not just about UCB, that can be in Augusta, that can be in Cleveland, that can be wherever you build your, your community. Um, when you start to work with each other and, and put so much trust in each other on stage to try to do this kind of work, uh, those are the kind of people you want to work with because you start to trust and believe that they're going to make you look good. You're going to make them look good. Uh, but I know um, Sarah, Sarah's, I'm, I'm going to say you're going to agree with me, Sarah, on all of this. Uh, <laughs> but we, we both have held booms for friends doing their own videos. We mm -hmm. have uh, brought uh, bagels to set for people who are uh, trying to build things. We've, we've uh, helped um, what else have we done? We, we do uh, anything put for together anybody. costumes. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, uh, and honestly, a lot of that has, uh, helped, you know, I, I directed my first, uh, videos and things because of people I knew through UCB who are 
were collaborating and they're like, hey, you do comedy. Uh, we're doing a comedy video. Would you direct this for free? And it's like, yeah. And you, you know, uh, we've gotten a lot of experience, but I think uh, to echo what Johnny said is the, um, what one of the many things that makes improv special is that it is a group of people who are all about collaboration. Um, and that extends past the stage and ends up, um, yeah, a lot of my favorite projects I've worked on, worked on, I've worked on because I've been recommended or through, you know, people I knew through UCB or, uh, other projects and things like that. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, the collaboration is, is a big part of it. It sounds like also a community. It's a very yes. strong community. So, and we all need community right now, don't we? More yeah. than ever, so, um, Rebecca. Yeah, I love this question. Uh, this person says, everyone tells me I'm really funny and should do improv, but when I'm on the spot, I'm just not as funny. Is there a way for me to channel my natural sense of humor into the scene work? <laughs> I think, uh, uh, go, yeah, please start. I'll go Sarah. for this. Um, I think sometimes when we are on the spot and we have the pressure of like, be funny, then it's extra hard to be funny because we are, um, uh, the reason your friend said you were funny in the first place is probably because you were just being yourself. Um, you were being human and tapping into your own interesting thoughts and feelings. And sometimes when we shift over to, okay, now I have to be funny. We end up being robots. <laughs> We're like, what does a human say? What does um, a doctor say? So uh, I would say, um, yeah, tap into um, the truth of, uh, of your character. And it's, it's in, um, this is a very actory, um, <laughs> hippie thing to say, but I think truly the truth is what makes uh, your characters funny, what makes you interesting, which is what makes us all interesting and funny. I think that's great. I, you know, the truth is, I think sometimes people um, try to do what they think others want them to do. Yeah. Right? Instead of really being in the moment of the work and bringing forward what, who you are and what's going on. So that's a great, great piece of feedback. Um, one is uh, it's, how do improv classes work? Because people are interested in what you do. Is it a series or are there single sessions? How many classes should I plan to take? What's the best way to approach it? Yeah, I think um, if you're interested, uh, you should start with Improv 101, which is where you would need to start anyway. And that's an eight session class. All of our uh, classes are eight sessions. For online, we found that two hours is a good uh, amount of time. Our in-person classes were three hours and translating that to this um, Brady Brunch Square can be exhausting. Um, so we, we've uh, modified our curriculum for the online world to can keep people fresh and, and that kind of thing. Um, so there's four core levels, Improv 101 through Improv 401. They're each eight uh, session uh, classes. Uh, and, and when starting in Improv 201 in the online classes, we also add a class show at the end of it where very much like what we just did, there's a um, maybe about a 30 minute show that we broadcast through our YouTube uh, channel. Then beyond that, there are um, advanced classes and um, a, a more advanced program that you can audition to be a part of. Um, and then along the way, a lot of our uh, teachers or, or students, excuse me, uh, find out that, that I really enjoy this. I want to also complement this with sketch writing classes or character focused classes where we, we work on building um, character monologues uh, for uh, folks to explore solo work. Thank you. Uh, Rebecca. Yeah, I was glad you mentioned the Zoom because we had a couple of questions about people in Zoom and different, you know, that that notion that Zoom fatigue is real. So uh, yeah. I was glad to hear you, you uh, shortened it up. Are there other differences in terms of how you've been, uh, how people have been engaging through Zoom and uh, the artistic connection around that? Would you say anything else about that? I think I it's think, a question a lot of people have as well. Oh, all absolutely. To. Yeah. Um, as soon as quarantine hit, I think everyone was like, how do we still be creative online? <laughs> and I think the best uh, the best things I've been uh, a part of are uh, when we embrace, you know, embrace the the constraints that we have. Um, I'm in a, 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 a monthly show online and we um, do improv and uh, characters and stand up. But it, it is really fun to uh, when you're on stage, you have the whole stage, you can move around when you're online, you just have this square. So it is fun to 
not think of it as a constraint, but think of it as a fun way to use this in a weird new way. Um, <laughs> some of my uh, favorite like weird character choices are, you know, uh, if someone is like, oh no, I'm drowning. Oh no, oh no. Um, moving their camera around or like sneaking in and using the space. Um, <laughs> these seem very dumb out of context, but they're very fun. Um, but yeah, I think uh, as with many things, but I think uh, improvisers, uh, know really well of uh, just embrace our new world um, a, as opposed to fighting against it. Um, and then you can find, now there's fun things that I can do on Zoom and in shows on Zoom that, um, gosh, I'm going to miss when I do uh, in-person shows. So I think another benefit for actors, especially as we're all also auditioning through this portal. So getting more time in front of it and getting more familiar with what you can do in it is great. I'm going to ask you one last question because I'm going to kind of, so doing, uh, studying improv doesn't mean that you're only looking to be an improv comic, right? This is, how does, how does, they say improv is a good skill to have and helps with auditions. I know this is true. I think it also helps with performance beyond just the audition, but can you explain to people who just think improv uh, is just what we saw here and how, it, and can you explain to them how it really relates to your, your personal work when you're uh, doing auditions? Yeah. Do you want to start Sarah or? Sure. Um, yeah, I think it does um, with, like with the character uh, motivation thing that we did at the very end, I, I really find that useful um, in auditions in that um, when you, you're doing an audition, especially for like a commercial, you're given maybe three lines. Sometimes you're given one line and the line is like, hey. Um, so you're not given a whole lot. But if we, um, if you take that choice, the, the, the small amount of things that we know about this character and can figure out the world in which um, uh, they've made this choice. Uh, I'm saying, hey, don't steal my bike. Um, if I make a choice about how important that bike is to me or um, what I've used that bike for, what's, <laughs> what's important uh, about it, then it's a lot easier to, if the scene extends very often um, in auditions, commercial auditions, but um, also uh, theatrical auditions, they say, you know, add something, be, make it personal, add a button on the end. Um, it's easy to do that because I've, I've already made a choice about, oh, why did my character do this thing? So then I can say, hey, don't take my bike. <laughs> my kid got me that for my birthday with all their allowance. That's um, a wild choice for a child to buy an adult. But uh, <laughs> yeah, about that character motivation, I think really helps in auditions. So you're not just like, hey, I don't know why I said, hey, but it's, I'm supposed to, but we're tapping into uh, making uh, these scenes personal, making those things personal mm -hmm. and that helps in our auditions. It helps you I develop think. specifics, you know, in, in mm -hmm. not just the, the, the jokes or the words you're using, but also in the, just as Sarah was saying, the motivation specifically, this is why my character does that. And I think that, um, you know, I was speaking a little bit about this before, but the, the emphasis that we put on making your scene partner look great, that's a mantra we have, make your scene partner look great. When you're doing a, a, an audition with someone else, if you have that mantra, you're going to come off looking uh, good in that moment because you're building off what they say. You're so invested in what they say. Um, not just in, in using the words that you that you ad lib, but also in the in your acting and and the way you respond and the way you listen. I think that's great. I think this uh, what I've noticed, and I want to share also. I think with um, improv is it allows you to be spontaneous in your response. You know, if, if when you're doing whether it's commercials or if you're doing on camera, let's say doing a show, that idea that in the moment you can really have a response that feels organic because you're really listening and playing off. You're not planning what it's going to look like. And that allows for so many possibilities in storytelling. It just, I think it just opens up the universe. I think the work you do is phenomenal. It's so important. I hope people really embrace this and move forward with it. Because as I said, whether you decide to be an improv performer or not, improv can help your performance. And I think that's really, it's key. So I have to say, thank you. I can't believe we're out of time here, but it was fabulous. The panel was great. I want to say thank you to uh, all of you for being here and, and 
giving your art to us so we can see your work and see how the process works. It's a skill that one cannot develop overnight, but I think it is inside all of us. So thank you for doing uh, being with us today. I can't thank you enough for all of that incredible information um, and that you what you've shared with our fellow SAG after members. A very special thanks to all of you who've been tuning in every week for our President's Task Force on Education, Outreach, and Engagement live streams. If you haven't already, while you're here, please again subscribe to SAG After's YouTube channel to get updates on the great content that we uh, we've been posting and. Uh, help to go and grow your career by learning what's out there. Have a great day and look forward to seeing you, seeing you next week. So take care. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you.